Welcome, welcome. Bar Pass, going to paint for you again. This is an 8x10 Centurion panel that I uh, toned very nice and bright. I'm trying to do that now, get some color on there before I start. Before I start, I thought I'd show you um, a while back, you may have watched, there's a video on here where I uh, painted over an old panel and I started a painting of a large white goose with a couple babies. I don't know if you remember that. And I had blocked in the babies, the little chicks, and I wasn't thrilled with them, so uh, I just thought I'd show you that I, see if you remember this or not, I can't get back far enough to really show you the whole thing. So I redid the babies and I think I feel better about them now. So I've got a frame for that. I'll be putting that in a frame to take, uh, doing a show at Northminster, fine art show. Um, actually, they rescheduled it because of the virus. It was supposed to be the first Saturday in February, and now it's um, toward the end of March. So if you live in the Cincinnati area, it's a very nice juried show at Northminster Presbyterian Church on Compton Road. <clears throat> so I'll show you what we're going to do tonight. Just got a pet commission right now. I'm working out the details, but we're not going to do that because I, I'm always hesitant to do that because it's a gift and I never want to, you know, ruin that for somebody. So I went through photos that I had, and this is one of them. I believe this is from Wisconsin, so I've cropped it to fit the eight by ten. So I love the red barn. Kind of an interesting shape, isn't it? And the little building behind it. Um, as I look at it, I like everything about it, but I may, um, that row of trees behind the barn is a bit straight for me, so I may change that, bring them up and down a little bit, so, but first thing we'll do is we'll sketch it on. All right, I'm standing. which is always for me a better way to paint because it gets me back on the brush and I'm painting with my whole arm because I'm actually, you know, I'm behind you, you're in front of me, so it puts me back even further, so. All right, so we're taking some transparent red oxide and some ultramarine blue, making a very dark dark. I have my, uh, show it to you, my Gamblin solvent-free fluid and a little cup here. We're going to be using some of that to thin with. All right, we'll dip into that and then we'll get into our paint. All right, we're going to start off. I'll use a handle my brush to help me too to place things. Got a tree kind of coming in, but the main tree line kind of is almost halfway and then the one tall tree is about there keep holding my brush out and looking at my photograph, seeing where things hit. Goes to about there, the tall tree. The road, far edge of the road, let me do that again. Comes off about there and it disappears. Let's get the height of it. Kind of pretty low, really. And it just kind of runs off. You know, you gotta decide what to leave in and what to take out. Sometimes you might, you know, you might want to totally eliminate the road. I let me check that angle again of that road. It's pretty sharp. I think it adds something to it. I kind of like it. So we're going to leave it. And there's an angle of grass that kind of angles a little bit across that way. And again, we're going to stagger that tree line. I don't want it to look like a straight line across, so we'll kind of stagger it. On the top of that barn. about there. Just a handy tool to use your handle and keep holding it out. Your brush, long skinny brush is nice for that. But 
we're going to uh, you know take our time on the sketch peek at that barn let me look again comes out to about there I'll just make you some reference marks it's helpful I've got some cute pictures of uh, this guy raises, I guess they're basset hounds. He gave me permission to paint, so maybe at some point we'll do that. I may have to zoom in a little bit to see what I think I'm seeing some of the front of that. The light's coming pretty much from this side. And as you can see, I'm kind of holding it like a pencil right now, just for this, just for a little bit here to get some of this stuff on back and forth. Now I'm back the other way. A lot of stuff is just instinctive, you know, you, you try to think about it, you know, break bad habits if you got them. And, and then back behind this building is another little building that kind of disappears into the hillside. So I'm looking where that top of that roof is about there. Now I have to decide Right now it runs right almost, it almost touches the building. So I think I'll pull it away a little bit. I either would want to run it behind or keep it away. Obviously this one's a barn. I guess this one's probably just a little shed of some kind. And there's some things I like, like I can see there is a, um, like a street sign there that I like. And there's a bunch of fencing that runs across here. It looks like they mowed here, and then this stuff here is all much weedier. So I'm about to switch to a little bit bigger brush because I want to work on values, and this is things. Yeah, let's wash this out and set this aside. It's a little bit skinny. I'm trying to wear it completely out. I've got it worn to a <laughs> quite the point. But it's nice for some things. It's like a lot of these brushes you get, they get real fuzzy after a while, but they work nicely for some things, so. All right, we're gonna still stay with a smaller brush, but something a bit bigger so we can get in some of these values. So again, we're, you know, thinking values here.
My sister's doing better. I talked about her last time she was sick. Thank you for your prayers. I've really got the urge to plein air paint which I enjoy doing from my car too, but it is too cold to even do that. We're only getting into the 30s during the day most of the time right now, so I just got the itch. Soon I'll be out there. Try to take you with me too. Maybe we can do that more this year. We've got like a winter weather advisory here for got some snow coming in I think tomorrow into Monday morning. It is that time of the year, isn't it? I'm ready for spring. Like I said, this stuff is really um, grassy looking through here, so I'm putting a few of these darks down in here. So we run it up over the top, you'll see it. light. This is actually like the center line. And I'm going to go ahead and put some value on here, but I don't want it too dark. You know, this is red and it's where the light is hitting and the light's hitting this end, so this is darker here. So I'm just looking around to see where else we might place some values. my little scraping tool. This roof is pretty light. I don't want these dark values to get in my way. And I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. I want to make sure that it feels nice and bright and light. And that seems a little heavy there. All right, that's not bad. All right. I think we'll start with our lightest light, which would be the barn roof. And it, it's a metal roof, and it actually, it looks pretty light in the photo. So I think, and uh, a lot of times, you know, your lightest plane would be where you're catching the sky reflection. Like a lot of times, you know, this might be lighter, but I'm trying to look. It's because the sun, I think, is coming from this side that that's your lightest plane, as you can see. And then it up here gets a little darker, looks cooler, darker and cooler. All right, so we'll mix up 
Got just some pure white out here first, okay? I'm gonna mix up something for the lightest part of that first. And I'm always saying that, but again, this is your painting, your little world, so you don't have to paint exactly what you see. It's a good exercise to see if you can. But, you know, who knows? All right, so let's start with the lightest part of that roof. And I'm going to think a lot about my brushwork like I have been lately. And I try to brush the heck out of things. I'm trying to use a gentle touch. Some of the people that I admire um, that are very good painters that I watch paint, um, they a lot of times have a very gentle touch when they lay down paint. That was like the workshop with Shelby Keefe. I just, she was just a joy to watch lay down paint. You know, like I said, confident brush strokes that she didn't play around with a lot. And uh, okay, I have that out further than it actually is. So we won't go out that far. Well, it's about there. This roof is uh, darker and grayer. The roof, um, I'm sorry, the road is also fairly light, but I don't feel that like I'm in any hurry to go after it necessarily. There are some doors on the side of that barn. I guess they're doors. Two um, lighter color they're there, we'll put them in. We may or may not want them permanently. I think we'll go ahead and block in that sky. I uh, put out some of that manganese blue, which I mentioned to you was a new color for me. I'm gonna try it again. I think what we'll do is put the, there are some clouds. I think we'll lay those in first. This is not pure white, this has a little I'm looking at it actually looks a little warmer so we're gonna put a little yellow in it and this may or may not work but we're gonna try it I'm gonna try to paint what I see I've been thinking about trying to get away from using cad red light and cad yellow medium 
just because the CADs are toxic. Um, but I've got to figure out what would be a good alternative for, for them. You know, my options aren't as open using the Cobras as uh, they are for some people. If you got any suggestions of a good yellow that would replace the cad yellow medium and something for the red for cad red light, throw it out there at me. I appreciate it. Like I said I'd like to get away from both of those. I clean up with water with the water mixables, so you know that helps. But one thing I hadn't thought much about, I was talking to my husband about it, is the fact that when I clean the brushes, um, which I don't, I don't every time, but I use a soap, you know, a brush soap, and then I, I scrub them real hard in the palm of my hand. Well, that's not real good, is it? I'm probably pushing that into my skin. So we do things without thinking. I should have a glove on for cleaning. And if you're a person that uses solvent and you're wiping into a rag, you're holding that rag in your hand with solvent, I would suggest you wear a glove on that hand anyway. You know, do what we can. A lot of artists have ended up with cancer. I heard Kwang Ho talking recently. If you know, he's a pretty well-known artist in this country, very good, and he was fighting, I think he said, bladder cancer this summer. No family history of it. and. Uh, I think he felt it was related to the paints. So, and you know, people suffer with headaches. That's how I ended up on the Cobras. I got into an online discussion with Mark Hansen, who's a good artist. He, though maybe he still uses oil some, but he was using the Cobras a lot. And he was real generous about when I had questions, I kicked out some questions to him. And that's how I ended up with the Cobras. Just trying to, you know, make healthier choices. I have a few autoimmune diseases and need to be as careful as we can, don't we? Keep remixing so the colors vary a little bit. As you can see, that was a little darker. And I'm trying not to cover up all my orange. Now you could do whatever you wanted here. You could take a softer brush, you know, do a little blending here if you wanted. I think I, I did mention to you Shelby demonstrated a cloudy sky to us at the workshop and she tended to lay to lay it on like this and leave it alone. That's probably not my preference. I You know, I, I clouds are soft and whoops, I about painted you. I ran into you. So I mean whatever you, you want to do. I mean if it's a good idea to lay it on if you're gonna do some blending I think and then maybe come back then and do some blending. messed around with that enough for now. We're going to move on. Hopefully I've got it everywhere I need it. I feel like 
we could do a little bit more over here. Maybe um, a few more sky holes too. All right, let's move on. The uh, bright side up here and on this end is a nice sunlit red. So I'm going to make an orange out of those two toxic colors, cad red leg and cad yellow medium. And then I'm going to take some crimson. And mix that into it. Because it's not an orangey red. Um, but we can always come back and adjust it. But let's, let's start that with that and see. I think we'll go back to that smaller brush. Now we got a shadow up under the eave there that we don't want to You know, and I can always come back with some of the more pure orange and kick this up if I feel like it needs to feel more lit, you know. And actually the little one over there does feel more orange to me than that one. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to go over the shadow a little bit more too. Same color with a little more blue in it. Which we can use on the, the shadowed side of uh, maybe these buildings. That to me feels pretty hard edge, so. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that into there. All right, let's block that roof in. And it's again, it's a um, gray. Looks to be, yeah, I've got it in there. A little chimney on the front we'll put in. And I'm trying, you know, not to cover all my pink. See it all poking through there. I dry brushed that in. We'll see if that works. We may or may not like it. Let's go ahead and block in some of these greens. Um, this area is flatter, it's catching more light. These trees back here are darker. And if you want them to feel like they're receding more, you want them to be cooler. So that's a decision you have to make. They aren't that far away in the photo, so they aren't necessarily cooler. I'm going to mix some Indian yellow and some ultramarine blue. That makes a very dark transparent green. Let's mix a little cad yellow and I'm going to put a little red in there. I want to kill it a little bit. I'm first going to look for the darker part of those trees.
I'm going to pick this up so and hold it in my left hand so I can get a better look at it. This tree, there's like a tree trunk there. Pretty fat brush here, kind of blocking in some of those, uh, the trunk. a bit more yellow to it. Like I said, if I wanted this to pull back further, I would um, cool that off a little bit more, which we might. I like actually when you see some distant hills in these scenes and you see blue hills and I do have some photos like that. And you could paint them in even if you don't see them if you if you have that experience, you know. But I wouldn't suggest working out of your head, you know unless you're a very experienced person. I actually was watching Jerry Arnell paint recently, and he, he knows a lot. I mean, he's, I don't know if you know who he is. He has a PBS series, and uh, he has a uh, Facebook channel. As good as, he has a lot of knowledge, and as good as he is, his students um, aren't as good but he was doing a painting the other day and he was painting it out of his head, something he had seen and, and was kind of encouraging people to work out of their heads. I don't really encourage that.
that every teacher's got a different idea on stuff. Every artist, they some have very strong opinions you'll find. But you have to find out what works for you, you know? You do a workshop and you take things from it you can use and sometimes you get a lot of work and a lot of help and sometimes you get very little but sometimes you'll get like one good tip that you you know feel good about even but if you decide you want to totally completely change the way you paint that can overwhelm you I've known people that have gotten really overwhelmed by workshops it kind of, you know, it kind of set them back. They felt like for a while they were trying to change everything. And all right, let me think what we're doing here. On the top of this hill is a bit of a yellow kind of color. I'm going after some of that kind of orangey yellow. You know, and you could, of course you could, you could spend a lot of time, you know, I used to take lessons from a woman that uh, she felt like trees red from their edges. You know, you could block them any way you wanted, but to her, and it's probably true, it just depends on how realistic, what your style is, how realistic you want to be, if you're trying to be impressionistic. But yeah, you could pick around and pull all kinds of edges out and, you know, make them look more realistic. Yeah, this stuff comes way up here. I'm trying to get a little more solvent on that. pulling that down a little bit because it feels a little short to me, the building. I'll take one thing we lost completely, which is easy to do. We lost this uh, we lost our sign. Did you see me paint over it? I didn't. With oils, um, over the years, that's one nice thing you can do. You can go in and scratch things in and paint them. And we're looking at the back of it, so it's just a light color.
you know, and you could change that again at your painting. You could um, make it a, you know, you could put an arrow on it or make it whatever you wanted. in a big, a fairly big brush here and put in some of this. And it's fairly scruffy, so I'm just going to kind of scrub it in. I can barely see any of that part of the building. solvent on that again. Got our little fence post there and our uh, pole. We'll get those in. Zoom in in here a little bit so I can see a little bit better. There's all these little skinny um, posts in front. I zoomed in here, I can see a lot more detail that we don't have. This brush may be too chunky. There's a little window there and there. The detail's fun, um, and I think people do like seeing it. That's a chimney that's there. It's dark on one side and light on the other. computer screen. <laughs> this 
looking at some of these angles to see how they feel. a little thing but that roof line would go out past the building a little bit. It's a cute little barn isn't it? Almost feels like a little schoolhouse or something. And push those poles back a little bit and I'm sure that sign would be off the road. So let's mix up something light for the roadway. Looking at a clean spot here. Um, of course it has a yellow stripe which is nice and it's a very light <sighs> color. The roof looks cooler than this. So it's a little warmer, so we'll put a little orange in it. There's some areas that are, might have been wet even, or some areas that look a little bit different, which you know can't hurt at all to vary some of the colors in there. That's where I put those dark stripes actually, where I saw some variations in color. And I'm going to, even though I put this on for no reason, really I'm going to scrape that off so I don't dirty up my yellow when I put it in. All right, so let's get our bigger brush. I'm going to wash the green out of it. Just had a lady pick up a commission today. It was the cutest dog. I'd like to show it to you, but I know she hasn't given it to her yet. Once I know she's given it to her, maybe I can show it to you. It had a costume on. <laughs> it was fun to paint. All right. Oh, I can brush right across there, really. I mean, no reason. pull a little more orange in a few areas. Okay, and the road is, um, the line is yellow.
zooming in, looking around a little bit, seeing what other detail I feel might be important. Well, that didn't work very well. Trying to do the other side of that peak, maybe. Let me step back because I haven't stepped back much. It is a little barn like that. It is a cute little barn. Um, I said, I guess those are little either shuttered, and I think they're little doors on the side. So it probably wouldn't hurt if they uh, came on down, right? put that in, but now I don't know that I need it because I'm afraid it... A lot of times if you look for it in your outside painting, like up under an eave, you will see you will see green, which is kind of a reflection of the the grass, I think. So we're gonna add a little green to that. Same with that. bad. Trying to see what bothers me about it. I'm zooming in a little bit here and there to see what I can see. Up in this peak, there's a... I didn't get enough paint on there. There's like an opening. a little detail that might improve it. All right, uh, one thing we don't have in of some, and I could get out my, I have a brush, you know, uh, that sword brush, it really is nice for tree trunks. We could get that out and add a bunch of stuff. You know, way back in there I see a little fence. I don't know that that's necessary. Well, I think it's kind of charming. I think I'm going to, um, I feel like I have a lot of pink showing in the road, maybe too much. Even though, you know, I want, I want the pink to show, I just feel like maybe I kick it back a little bit, you know. this to feel like it comes down to the road.
Well, that's been 56 minutes. That's not bad. Um, you're actually pretty centered to it already, but I'll take you in a little bit so you can see some of the brush work. See how we dry brush the one barn roof? So I left a lot of pink showing. And I kind of like it. Got a little sign, a little fence up, and uh, yeah, I'll look at it and see what I think. I think I like it pretty good. I might um, do a little more blending in the sky with a clean brush and uh, see how you see all those strokes. I might do a little, just a bit more pulling them down, a little softening, but I don't think, I don't know that this brush is clean enough right now. I don't want to pollute my sky this late in the game, you know. I'm cleaning it up here. You know, and you could kick up, this could even be more sunlit feeling. It could be very intense if you wanted, you know, uh, and you could throw more pure orange in there, you know, if you wanted to look more sunlit. But I think it feels like a pretty sunny day. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm trying to think if there's anything else new I wanted to show you. I don't think so. I think that's it. All right, please like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Um, hit the notification bell and it will tell you when I upload a new video. And thank you. Thank you for joining me. And watch for me next time and stay well. I keep saying that. Bye-bye.